All right, so we're just going to do a quick breakdown of the uh, Fly Sky GT5. Uh, it is a six channel uh, 2.4 gigahertz uh, transmitter and it does come with the receiver as well. Um, very budget friendly uh, transmitter um, for the price of $70 off of Amazon. Uh, I got this um, and we will see how it, how it forms. Um, but uh, we'll go ahead and get this open. So I've already got into this, unfortunately, because I had to redo this video. But it's going to come with a grip, so you can change out the grip for either a smaller or a larger hand. I'm not really sure which one this is for. Um, it comes with a quick start guide, uh, which is really not so informative. Uh, you will wind up having to download the um, manual from you can just Google it, and that will give you all the information as far as um, how to operate this and, and what some of the different abbreviations mean, uh, because it is helpful when it comes to um, adjusting stuff like the uh, ABS or the um, stability uh, management. But anyway, so we're going to turn this on real quick. So, it's going to be your battery voltage, your model. I only have the one model in this right now uh, because my X Max I leave on that controller for my daughter. This is just a graph here that gives you proportions of the servo, which is kind of cool. And then the DVXL is the model that is on this right now and uh, I will go over all the different um, categories you can go through and adjust and, and the abbreviations and uh, the proper setup of this now that I've actually got to use it and have some time on it. Alright so we're just going to go through these settings real quick so you can get kind of a basic idea on how to how to use this. Um, we're going to push this button, which is going to access this menu up top here. And this scroll wheel will let you choose different ones. Okay, the first one is going to be model. Okay, you'll click that. That'll basically be changing your model number. Go over to name. That'll change your name. Pretty self-explanatory. Okay, so this is going to be your uh, reverse servo. So steering, throttle, auxiliary three, four, five, and six, all set to normal. None of them are reversed. If you need to reverse one, click the button again, go over here, reverse. Pretty easy. Now we come to our exponential. So this is basically, you're going to hit the button. We're going to access our steering, okay? So now this is where we'll come up here. I don't know if you can see that, but we have an LFU. I don't know what that stands for. So that's going to adjust the exponential to the left. There is going to adjust the exponential to the right. Okay, you see the RB. Okay, and you'll just use this scroll wheel. Oops. After you pick the left, you'll use the scroll wheel to change. You'll go back here, switch to right, button, change. Okay, I have my steering cut back just a little bit uh, because it rubs on my drive shafts. Come over here, throttle, same, your different channels, etc. Okay. Sub trim, basically same thing, steering, throttle, left, right. Zeroed out. This is going to be your dual rate. Same concept. Exponential. Same concept. If you're not sure what that is, 0% uh, exponential is going to basically give you almost kind of like a flat linear power curve. Uh, the more exponential you get will give you more of a arch in your power curve. Uh, some of the 
uh, nicer radios actually show you the, the arch that you're getting. Um, here's your ABS. Now this is where uh, it gets a little bit more difficult. Uh, so we got ABS on, okay. Brake. So this is going to be the, the power of the brakes for the ABS. So I want them at 100%. Okay. Oops. This is going to be the delay. So this is going to be the delay after the trigger is pulled before the ABS kicks in. I want that at 0%. This is going to be the cycle, okay? So this is uh, how fast the brakes are going to cycle on and off. Um, with being on a gas uh, vehicle right now, with working off of a servo, I want them as fast as possible because obviously the servos are limited by their speed. This is going to be your throttle position engagement. So basically, uh, at what position of the trigger pull will it engage the ABS and I have this set at 75% so it, when I get the trigger pulled to 75% it will then engage the ABS thereafter okay duty okay now this I'm going to move down to my DVXL and kind of give you an idea so you can actually see the servo working uh, while I adjust this uh, and it'll make a lot more sense because uh, it made absolutely no sense to me even in the manual so we're going to move down to the car. Okay, so now basically what I'm going to do is uh, show you what this duty cycle is going to do. Okay, I'm starting at zero with all the same basic settings. Okay, so I'm going to in engage the brakes, which is going to activate the ABS. And that's my ABS now. Okay, I'm going to increase the duty cycle. That's one. That's two. That's three. And that's four. So it reduces the throw and increases the frequency. Okay. So now basically I'm going to go back down to zero. Okay. Now I'll start it again. Now I'm going to go down to negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. And this is probably the one that I would use because that's going to keep my brakes on most of the time and just kind of pulsate the strength of them. Okay, now that you have a better idea of that, we'll move on. All right, so now we're going to move on. This is going to be our trim option here. And I have the, the trim turned quite a bit because I'm having some steering issues with this. But again, you press the button, change that. I had to adjust my throttle trim a little bit as well. It's my back button. Fail safe, okay. And I'll demonstrate this in just one second, but basically the fail safe. So if I lose frequency between the transmitter and the receiver, this is what's going to happen, okay? So right now, my steering is going to turn 90% 90, 90 to one direction, okay? My throttle is going to go into braking at 92%. We have our crawl mode, which I have not got into yet. Uh, but it has stuff as far as four-wheel steering. So there's your front, your rear, your four-wheel. Uh, turning opposite directions, all kinds of stuff. I haven't quite got into crawling yet, but I do look forward to that. So that's the crawl mode. So then we're going to go into uh, stability vehicle control. Okay, so that's on. Okay, your options are actually going to list down here on the side. Okay, so neutral calibration which that's basically it's pretty simple and just done calibrated okay reverse this is just going to be if you're going to reverse the the settings on it okay so steering gain so this is basically going to determine how much input the stability management control is going to have into keeping it straight so at zero percent it's not going to have any input into it. So then at 100%, it's going to have full control of trying to keep that vehicle straight. Throttle, so that's basically when it's trying to keep itself straight, how much is it going to reduce the throttle? So right now, it's only going to reduce the throttle 25% when it's trying to keep itself straight. Uh, at zero, 
it would be absolutely no reduction of throttle and at 100% it would be maximum reduction of throttle to try and keep your vehicle straight. And priority, this is basically just going to determine the priority between steering and the ABS. At what point during the steering do you want the ABS to uh, kick in or to release to allow better turning? And that is it. And as of right now, this controller has been really quite nice. Um, this is going to be your channel 3. There's your steering dual rate, so you can adjust dual rate on the fly. This is going to be your channel 4, which is a three-way toggle. Taking it, you have a neutral. And then a forward or backwards, whatever you want to do. Probably make a good winch control. Right here, you have your steering trim, your throttle trim. And then on the top, these two dials are going to be your channel 5 and channel 6. They're not buttons or anything, just dials. And then of course you have your antenna, which you might want to flip up if you're going to be doing some distance. Um, I've had this thing, uh, I would say probably about 100 yards so far uh, with no issues. Uh, the, the specs do say uh, 200 meters or less. As your distance and I'm sure they're assuming in a perfect environment so I would say 100, 100 yards is probably a safe guess uh, but I will ultimately probably push it to its limit and find out <laughs> but for now that controller has been awesome I love it it does everything I uh, want it to and um, for $70 man what a deal <laughs>